Hello, Soulshine. It's B. It's been a minute since I've been online. It's been a minute since I put a video out. But like I was a year ago, almost to the day, it was April 4th, 2019 for my last videos. Um, and it is March 6th, 2020. And I am called in the same way to send um, the same message to you and give to you. Um, I was pushed out the door. <laughs> It feels like by my spirit team. So I guess this message needs to be heard by someone somewhere. And maybe this story can help you. And I thought it was funny on my way out the door to come sit in the backyard. <laughs> I uh, went to go put my chapstick on and I reached for a glue stick. <laughs> so glad I didn't put that on because that would be a really sticky situation. <laughs> anyway, I... Uh, purpose. I feel like I've been asking myself and probably everyone around me what my life purpose is, was since I was a kid. Why am I here? What am I supposed to do with my life? What is, what am I being drawn to do? I remember in my 20s and even in my 30s, I was stuck on trying to figure this out and my alarm clock went off a couple years ago and I've awakened to my life purpose and this is it. My life purpose is unconditional love. Showing it, teaching it, feeling it. I am a Reiki master. I'm a shamanic Reiki practitioner. I'm a mom, I'm a healer, I'm a caretaker, I'm a really good friend, but I'm real. And the story I want to tell you today has to do with healing and has to do with dying and it has to do with hermit crabs. <laughs> so here goes. Oh, and, and I'm a storyteller. I forgot that piece. This video is gonna be unedited, so as it comes to me, it's going to come out, and I just wanna be real and honest and talk to you about awakening to your purpose and life mission. And this is how it happened for me. So about a year ago, no, two years ago, um, my daughter wanted a pet. She was five. And we were renting a house that didn't allow pets. So I thought, we live at the beach. Why not hermit crabs? <laughs> she loved it. She totally fell for the idea. And so instead of just getting a regular everyday you know tiny hermit crab off the boardwalk we went for some pretty eclectic ones um, and got big hermit crabs two of them were 15 years old at the time and we brought them home we built this huge extravagant tank and filled it with sand and uh, my little girl decorated it and um, it felt really great. She flourished as a nurturer and um, our house had a new life in it. It felt great. Six lives actually, there were six crabs. And unfortunately a few months later, one of those six crabs that we purchased died unexpectedly. Um, don't really know why and my little girl was distraught absolutely distraught and she cried and she cried it was her first experience with death it was her first understanding of loving something and having to let it go and I tried Reiki I tried talking I tried hugging and loving and um, the tears wouldn't stop there was no understanding I don't even know why I wanted the tears to stop it yeah, I do. 
I feel like I've been injected with like a truth serum, so excuse me if I auto-correct myself because <laughs> I do know why. I was frustrated. I was going through some stuff myself and this death came at a horrible time and it was a bad time of the night. It was like, I was frustrated. And I remember walking into my bedroom, removing myself from the tears and the, the drama for a bit and I put my hands up to God and I said, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what to say. I don't, I am at a loss. How do I make this better? How do I help her understand? How can I get the tears to stop? I didn't get any messages. So we got in bed and I tucked her underneath my arm and finally we both fell asleep. The most incredible dream came to me. God answered my prayers. But I didn't know it was a much bigger prayer or a much bigger answer than the hermit crab. So in this dream, I saw my little girl, but she didn't have a face. She didn't have a body. She was beautiful colors, light and pastel, fluffy. We were on a cloud. Uh, mind you, I have a very vivid imagination. I am a kid at heart and um, I read a lot too. So if any of these ideas are something that I read that came through my dream, I can't prove that or deny that, but this is what my dream was. Um, God, and the most beautiful sparkling silver light, sparkling, with a very deep voice, but very soothing, was sitting on a cloud next, or sitting on the cloud with my little girl. And I was sitting away somewhere different on another cloud watching and God says to my little girl I have something to tell you you're going someplace really really special and I need you to do something for me my little girl being the buoyant happy go lucky fully energized spirit that she is, you could just feel her. She's like, what God, what, 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 what? And I heard her voice, it was the same. I knew it was her. And God says, I have something for you to do and I have some place for you to go. And when you get there, you have something very specific to do. With curiosity, she says, what? Okay. And I see, I'm witnessing this, right? I see him go, so I couldn't see or hear or understand what was said in, in what I assume is her ear. And the, the feeling of her energy changed. It was, um, really? God says, yeah. And he says, you're gonna go to earth and you can make all the decisions. You're in charge. You can do these, let's say, just for conversation, because I didn't hear it. Let's say he gave her five things that she needed to do or learn or accomplish or teach, whatever it is, five things. We're just gonna say, yours could be 15, mine could be 100. Who knows what our number is, but God said, these are the things you need to do and accomplish in your time on earth. My little girl says, okay, pinky promise, which in the dream made perfect sense because nothing gets by a pinky promise. You can't, you can't break a pinky promise. And she does with God. And God says, okay, so you've agreed to these five things. Now, and he looks down and he parts the clouds underneath them. And my little girl goes, oh. and he 
he said, now you have to pick your mom and your dad. Now remember the five things that you have to do while you're on earth. So make sure that you pick your foundation. Make sure you pick it well. Make sure you make a good decision. This is your first decision. And my little girl kind of looks around and does this. That's what I remember. And she goes, that one. You picked a good one. And they turn around and he opens up the other side of the sky. And she, he says to her, Now pick your dad. And she goes, hmm, That one. And she picks her dad. And God says, Another good one. Good job. And he says to her, The final piece of information I want to tell you is that in order to come back here with me, you have to accomplish these, again, five things. Take all the time you need. You could learn it in a day, you could learn it in a year, you could learn it in a hundred years. However long it takes you, this is your pinky promise to me. And my little girl says, okay. And he says, I will never, ever, ever leave you. I will always be inside of you. All you have to do is call for me. And I'm sending you to earth with a guardian angel who is going to be my voice when you think you can't hear me and who is going to help you with some of the smaller things and maybe the bigger things in life. But make sure you ask for help whenever you need it. You're never alone and I'll see you soon. And he kissed her on her forehead and I woke up crying <laughs> as I am now and um, as the alarm clocks in the room started going off I thought I know what happened to that crap <laughs> and I tell my little girl like wake up wake up I gotta tell you I gotta tell you something we have a party to plan your crab learned all of his lessons. I am so proud of him. He's 15 years old and he learned all of his lessons and he's a crab. Crabs, hermit crabs don't usually live that long. And my little girl's face just lit up. Like there's a reason to celebrate his life and not be sad that he's gone. Granted, we cried quite a few times after that, but the understanding of life just took on this huge new meaning for me. Now fast forward two years. That was two days ago. Our oldest crab, hermit crab, one of the original six that we purchased and brought home that night, died also. And I was reminded of this beautiful story, which I've, I've told, I can't tell you how many times, but a full circle aha moment happened as I'm telling my daughter the story all over again, through the tears, through the crying and the funeral and the burial and in our garden. <laughs> I said, we have a reason to celebrate. And then it was like a shock wave hit me right in the face. I said, do you know what these crabs mean to us? We bought them in the saddest part of our life. I was separated from my little girl's dad. We've since divorced since my last post but it was hard for her and she was looking to be a nurturer she wanted to be nurtured and loved and she wanted to some she wanted something to love her in return and that crab did it and the the crab that we so eloquently named Hurley <laughs> passed away two days ago because 
his mission that he started at 15 was to bring joy back to our home, to bring joy back to our hearts, to help us find who we are, what our purpose is. I know mine now. And I think my little girl does too. So the message that I wanna share is when you're wondering what you're supposed to do in your, in your life, ask. Ask from that place that I did 